Hello friends, welcome to your own YouTube channel Achievers Data Engineering. My name is Gyanendra and this is part 6 of Azure Data Factory tutorial series. In this video, we are going to configure the copy activity that we started from previous video. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video, I would highly recommend to watch that before watching to this video because in our previous video, we discussed about what are the configurations required for copy activity and we started creating the resources within Azure to create and configure the copy activity. So let's get started with configuring copy activity in Azure Data Factory. All right, to get started with copy activity, first we need to go on Azure Data Factory Studio. Then we will go on to the author tab. Under author tab, we will click on this plus icon or we can click on the pipeline and then say new pipeline. The moment we will add a new pipeline, we will get some new options and a separate space for configuring activities. Now I'll just go ahead and collapse these menus. And then whatever pipeline that we have added, we can give it and rename it from here. If you don't see that particular option, you can you know click on this properties window, it will appear or disappear accordingly. Now on to this canvas, what we can do is under this activities list, we can look for copy and then we can drag this copy data activity onto the canvas. Or you can also expand this move and transform category. Under that, you will find this copy activity as the first activity. Now, all the activity within this list of activities available in Azure Data Factory are a dynamic in terms of their properties. So depending upon which particular activity you are dragging into the canvas, or if you have multiple activities, then which particular activity is selected in the canvas, properties or options in the bottom will change accordingly. Okay, now talking about copy activity. With help of copy activity, we can perform a data movement. It's not limited only to the data movement, but we can also perform a file movement from one location to another. All right, so in order to proceed further, what we need to do is we need to configure all the details given below so that we can proceed further. So uh, starting with the name, I'll say, let's say copy sales data. I'll say copy sales data. Now here I need to provide all the source information. So as I explained in the beginning, for source, we need to provide two information. One is data set and one is linked service. All that information can be created here step by step or alternatively you can click uh, under this factory resources, click on this plus icon and from here you will be able to create a data set. Now one point to be noted is whenever we are creating a data set, for example, if I am clicking on this new option, then our source data is nothing but the blob storage. This is the blob storage that we created and inside that we created a container and saved our Excel file. So what I will do is I'll select the Azure blob storage and say continue. Then our file format is Excel file. I'll select that and say continue. Now here again, it is asking for a linked service. Now, because we haven't created a linked service, we need to create it from here. Now, again, we can create a linked service by selecting this new option or alternatively we can cancel. Let's say cancel from here. We can go on to this manage tab. Under this manage tab, you will see all these options. Under that, you can click on this link service and you will be able to create a link service from here. All right. So let's start creating a link service first. Then we will create the data set. So again, our link service, it's supposed to be a connection information with Azure blob storage. I'll select that and say continue. Then I need to give it a name. So maybe I'll say link service underscore Azure blob storage. And now here, connect via integration runtime. So one point is to be understand is I haven't created or we haven't created any integration runtime as of now in the Azure Data Factory. This particular integration runtime, which is says auto resolve integration runtime is automatically created by Azure whenever we are configuring the Azure Data Factory for the very first time. And all the compute resources required to perform this data movement will be given by this auto resolve integration runtime. So for now, I'll just select this one and move to the next option. Next option says authenticated authentication type. So it is asking how we need to authenticate this connection with the blob storage. So I'll say, uh, let's say if I'm saying selecting the account key, that was a account key. 
and then i'll say from azure subscription itself so whatever subscription we have as of now azure will try to see what all the storage accounts are available it has automatically identified this is the name of our blob storage and it was able to uh, you know fetch it based on the subscription so i'll just say that and let's try the connection whether it is working or not okay so connect uh, connections uh, test connection became successful it says uh, connection successful so i'll just go ahead and click on create and uh, just wait for a few seconds while it is creating okay so our first linked service is created and if we have so many uh, linked services created we can come on this particular manage tab under linked service we will be able to see the list of linked services also within a linked service we can have multiple data sets connected so right now we haven't connected any so that's why it says related as zero but once we will connect our data set with this particular linked service we will be able to see here as number one as one service is connected with this so coming back to this author tab and this time i'll click on this copy activity go to the source and say new data set again i'll select the blob storage continue select the file format excel say continue and here i'll say let's say data set and i'll say sales data and now i will be able to select that link service from here now uh, it is asking for the file path so i can click on this folder icon go into the container and it will you know fetch all the list of files available on this container let's wait for a few seconds okay it has got the file i'll say okay now we know that this particular file is having you know headers in the first row so i'll just check that it is trying to identify the sheet uh, within that excel file so let's wait for a few more seconds while it is loading okay okay now it has able to identify that there is a, a sheet name as in i'll just select that and say okay now uh, you can leave this import schema option to be you know from file store in this case and just say okay and again let's wait for a few more seconds while it is creating the data set all right so our first source data set and link service is created now inside the source instead of that one on the top you can see we have got all these information details here and at this point of time we can click on this preview data and it will allow us to have a you know a glimpse of data which is available in our source data set which is nothing but our excel file so let's wait for a few more seconds while it is loading the preview okay now we can see uh, we we are able to see the preview of data it by default shows 10 rows so i'll just close this now let's move towards configuring the sync details so similar to source we need to create a data set and link services both for data set uh, uh, for the sync data set so i'll hit new now in case of sync we are going to load this data into azure sql database so accordingly we will select azure sql database now by default what all the options that you are seeing here only supported options will be enabled so any option which is grayed out that is something not supported so at this point of time all the options available here are supported so i'll just select this azure sql database and say continue now let's rename this data set and i'll say azure sql db azure sql db and we need to create a link service so i'll click on new here alternatively we can go on to the manage tab and we can create a link service from there also so i'll just hit new and let's rename this i'll say link service underscore azure sql now here again we need to provide these details to connect to our sql database so i'll again one thing i missed here again by default auto resolve integration runtime is selected which was automatically created by azure data factory so i'll select our subscription under subscription it has already identified what is the server available 
and let's look for the database it has got the database also authentication type because while creating azure sql we opted for sql authentication that is by default selected here alternatively we can go for these options which are available for performing the authentication so i'll provide the details here okay and now let's test the connection all right so connection got failed let's see why we can expand this and we can read the error message it says cannot connect to the sql database please connect sql from check the link service configuration is correct make sure this firewall allows integration runtime cannot open support is not allowed to access the server see so we have got an error that this particular ip or this particular you know ip address or it's the machine that i'm going to access it's not allowed to access the database so what we need to do is i'll just go ahead and go on to the azure sql similar to what i explained in the first video we will go to the overview go into the server under server and under security and networking i'll go ahead and add this current ip address so this is a different one for example i am on vpn then maybe it's showing a different ip so what i will do is go on to the more copy this particular notepad and from here i can copy this ip then i'll go to the server settings and instead of this one i will add this ip address and say save and now again we will come back to this connection and say test connection again now whenever we are adding any ip in the firewall settings sometimes it may take few minutes but most of the time it is done very fast so this time connection is successful i'll just go ahead and click on create this is a very common issue that we face every day and that is why when we are working in the corporate world we we get to see a static ip that is always white listed in the azure so that it's not changed every day but because i'm still using a dynamic ip and that's why it got changed so again uh, we have got a data set name we have got a link service it is asking to select a particular table and because we have only one table it has identified that and it is asking for importing the schema so i'll select the by default option that says from connection store and say okay and let's wait for again few more seconds while it is creating our data set and link services cool so our sync data set and sync link services both are created at this point of time again what we can do is we can open this data set and we can preview the data whatever is available in the table and because we don't have any data right now we will be able to see the column names only so i'll hit close and let's go back to the pipeline and the copy data activity now fourth tab is mapping this mapping we can just click on import schema as long as we have configured this source and sync properly azure data factory will automatically identify what is the mapping available and it will import it within azure data factory so just let's wait for a few more seconds while it is importing cool so now it has automatically imported the schema it has identified what is the source column name available in our excel file and accordingly if we have a matching name available in the table it will automatically establish the mapping but in a scenario let's say we have a different column name in our source but we want to load it under a different column name in our table then we will have to manually select using this drop down and then we will have to map accordingly but in this case because it's uh, exactly matching then it has automatically identified the mapping and created it now we need we don't need to do anything at uh, in the settings as of now we will talk about all these details in our upcoming videos now at this point of time when all the configuration required is done but still it is not saved because we are working in a web based tool and whatever work that we have done so far we need to publish it so that we are not losing it by mistake so for that i will just go ahead and click on publish and it will ask that it is going to publish these many details 
and I'll just go ahead and click on publish. Then let's wait for a few more seconds while it is publishing the changes. And it is it has finally deployed all the changes. Now at this point of time, if even I close it, I will be able to go into the list of pipelines and I will see there is one pipeline that we created and we can open it. Now, when it comes to executing a pipeline, there are many options to which we can execute a pipeline. The first one is the debug mode. Now, whenever we are performing any uh, development in this Azure Data Factory pipeline, we can always this, use this debug mode and pipeline will be executed. It is only meant for performing the debug while development. Alternatively, we can click on add trigger. We can add a new trigger or edit existing one. And alternatively, we can click on trigger now, say OK, and pipeline will be executed. Now, don't worry about the triggers. Uh, in our upcoming videos, we will talk about uh, triggers in details. For now, I will just go ahead and click on debug. And the moment I'll hit debug, pipeline will start processing. And you will see it has got this processing icon. And this pipeline status will be changed to in progress. Now let's wait for a few more seconds while pipeline is, is executing. Now whatever processing is being done, that will be visible over here. So if you're not seeing it, just make sure hit in the blank space and you will be able to see the details over here. Now if you have more than one activity, all those activity one by one will appear here in the same order in which they are being performed. So again, let's wait for a few more seconds while pipeline is processing. All right, cool. So now we can see our pipeline is successfully completed. And that means it is saying that it has you know, transferred the data or it has completed the operation that uh, we you know configured for. So at this point of time, if we go back to our SQL database and if we select the query, so when we did it for the last time, we had only columns that we created as a part of you know create table. Now, if I hit run, select a star from sample sales table. We, we are expecting to see the data now. So let's wait for a few more seconds. Cool. So now we can see uh, because that pipeline executed successfully, whatever data was there in that Excel file that has been successfully copied into a SQL table in our SQL database. All right, guys. Uh, that's it for the copy activity in this video. Alternatively, if you want to explore more details of copy activity, then you can go through this copy activity documentation. I'll mention the link in the, doc in the description of the video. All right, I hope you like the content. If yes, go ahead and please hit the like button and do subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date on any latest video that I upload. In our upcoming videos, we are going to discuss in details about how to monitor a pipeline. And we will also discuss about triggers and SHIRs within Azure Data Factory. Thank you for watching. Keep learning. Have a great day.